was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Nyla, Lucius of Cyrene, Manadine, who had been brought up in Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So they've been sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Shall we? Lord, this is your word, and these are your people. And Father, you know the needs that we have, and every challenge that confronts us. In the name of Jesus, we want to do your will. We want to accomplish your purposes. We want the kingdom of God to be established. We want every bulwark that is before us to be pulled down. Every stronghold to be demolished. And we want victory in the name of Jesus. We want your people, God, to be victorious. Therefore, send forth your spirit in mighty power among us that we may, oh God, become the church you have destined and designed us to become according to the good pleasure of your will. Yes, Do it now, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. Please be seated. I want to preach to you this morning from the topic in the heart of the city, with the city at uh heart. -huh. I know that may not be familiar to you, so let me say it again. In the heart of the city with the city at uh heart. -huh. Hear the word, this church, in the heart of a city called Antioch. Antioch was the third largest city in the Greco-Roman world. As the Roman Empire grew and stretched across the world from Africa in North Africa all the way down to the British Isles, this city, Antioch, was the third most significant of the cities that they occupied. It rivaled Rome itself and Alexandria, Egypt, in several ways. All through Antioch, you would see theaters, and you will see gardens, and you will see temples, and you will see aqueducts, which means they had running water coming into the city. You will see various colonnades, and you will see the Temple of Apollos, and you will see various uh, artifacts, statues of outstanding generals and people that uh, celebrated victories and military uh, excursions and so on. This city had significance and prominence in the first century. And therefore, you found, we find now, here is a church founded at Antioch in the midst of the city, a very multicultural city with people from all over the world. Romans, certainly Africans, certainly people from Asia, Phoenicians, uh, but predominantly the culture of the city was that of Greek. Greek culture that dominated the city. People who exhibited very witty uh, and sarcastic uh, uh, intelligence in the way they spoke and conducted themselves. You can find that among the Antiochians. A very interesting and important city at that time. And right there, God established a church. A church that Barnabas and Saul uh, nurtured for over a year, teaching the word of God. And they did such an excellent job that the people, the disciples, were so immersed, they so took in the training and began to live that they were called Christians. They were not just called disciples because the, the word disciple you need to understand was a common word. That was not just used of Jesus. That was used of people who followed Socrates or Plato. That was used of many people who followed various philosophers and teachers, including those of the Pharisees and those who were the leaders of synagogues all over. And so a student of a person, a follower of a person, an adherent, was just that. But here, they were not just called disciples of Jesus to distinguish them from others, but they were called in Antioch Christians. That means that people recognized that they were followers of the man called Jesus Christ. 
Today we have that name and we use that name with pride and with dignity. But there at Antioch was where that term was first coined and used of the Christian church. And I believe if you look at it, you will see that there was a serious progression of this church. First there were just converts. They were pulled together to be students and learners and adherents. Then by their living and lifestyle, they were called Christians. But if you look at the church, you will see here in the first verse that now there are, you're seeing gifted people in the church. What's the progression of God? Remember, we're not doing this series just because it's in the Bible, but we're doing this so as to apply it to ourselves, that likewise we may see dynamic growth, and that we may see a similar move of God among us. Anybody want to see a move of God? Amen. Anybody want God to use them dynamically and effectively, that we would not just be a Sunday board of meeting group, but we would be the church of Jesus Christ, we would be Christians that are making a difference in our city. Amen. And if you look carefully, you will see that the church started in Jerusalem and the apostles were engineering the things. The apostles were the ones that stood up and witnessed for Christ. And when Philip went up to Samaria, the apostles went there and made sure that the Samaritan church was well constituted and put together. And then when they heard that Antioch was receiving the gospel, it was the apostles that sent Barnabas down there to see what he can do among the Gentiles. But now look, it has grown from just the apostles who are in charge. And now you see another tier of ministry that has sprung up. There are gifts of the spirit and gifted people who are now functioning in the church. It says in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain what was he were? Prophets. Prophets. There were people now, and that word prophet, from the Greek word propheme, means people who speak forth the word of God. There were people who were competent to hear from God. There were people who were filled with the spirit of God and had the ability to edify the church, to strengthen the church, to take the Old Testament scriptures and make them meaningful to the people who never knew anything about God. You must remember that the only Bible they had was Genesis to Malachi. They didn't have no New Testament. There were no Gospels written yet. These people were just living on the teachings of Christ that was imparted in their heart, that they were reiterating orally. Luke was now documenting and putting together the various stories from Mary, from Joseph, from people that were alive and around, from the traditions that were passed on to him. Luke was now compiling what happened. And right there, you had people who were able to take the word of God like the writer of Hebrews and make sense of it to people who were coming to faith in Christ. People who didn't know anything about the laws of God, about Moses or Abraham or all of these patriarchs that made the Old Testament a living history of salvation to the world. And so here are competent people filled with the Spirit of God that were able now to bring the Word of God, the power and the clarity and to proclaim the God's Word and to speak as the Spirit of God directs them to speak. That's what prophets do. Prophets take the Word of God, take the mysteries of God and be able to break them down and cause what is obscure to become clear. To cause what is mysterious and hidden to become apparent. To cause that which is complex to become elucidated. That then maybe you may be able to grasp what God intent is. And the prophet speaks for God, represents God, and says to our lives, this is what God intends for you. As Paul speaks to the Ephesians, for example, you will see where he says that as a church, you have become saved, even though you were once going according to the course of this world. And God did that as he now reveals the mystery of the gospel that was hidden for years. It is now being revealed to you. You are 
are the recipients of an excellent gospel. And he proclaimed that there were prophets who were hearing from the Spirit of God. They had gone through the classes, Brother Mark. They had gone through the discipleship classes. They've got the ABCs of salvation. They've got the doctrines of the faith. They have understood the teachings of the Word of God. And now they were able to apply them to their present circumstances. Amen. Amen. Prophets. Yeah. We need prophets like them in this church and every church. Yeah. We need prophets that are able to take the word of God and proclaim it to the people of God. Mm. That they may know what is the will of God, the intent of God. Yeah. Paul, as he writes, he says to the church that you may know what is the good pleasure of his will. We need people that can say what is the good pleasure of God's will. We are, we are filled many times as churches with people who are trying to tell God what is the good pleasure of all will. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. God is what we want. God is what we need. We declare it's going to be so. We declare it's going to happen. But what God wants to declare. And we need prophets that are able to say, Thus said Prophets that are able to say, This is the will of God. This is what God is saying. This is what God is saying to Barbados right now, based on where you are, based on my calendar, this based on what events are unfolding. This is what you need to do and to be. Be prophets that will speak a word in season. We need prophets that can discern the times and say what needs to be to be done yeah. right now. now. So that when we rise up and do it by the grace of God, things can change yeah. because people have changed. And then there were also teachers. And you need to know that Jesus promised in Matthew chapter uh, 23 and um, 24, around that, that verse, he says to, to the, the nation of Israel that was rejecting him, he says, you know, I'm gonna, I send among you prophets, wise men, and you're going to take them, and you're going to kill them, and you're going to arrest them, you're going to persecute them. Just as he promised, here are prophets and teachers in the Word of God. Now teachers are not just people who have a certificate in teaching. Of course, that is good, and that is important, and that is necessary. We have a church with several of our members here who are excellent, qualified teachers who are able to uh, expound good grammar, mathematics, science to our children. We thank God for people like Sister Joan who have taken many of our children who seem to have difficulty and the skill she has been able to take some of the most backward children, not only here, but even in her own school, and turn them around to be given a class of people that were written off. I went to her graduation, and there was a class that nobody thought should even take the 11 classes of this, of that, they go to them. They just go put them somewhere because they got no choice. But she took that class, and with, 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 with all of her spirituality, and with all of her heart, she taught that class, and that class registered the best results that school ever knew. Teaching is good. Teaching is good. But beyond just the ability, and I know she has more than just natural ability, teachers in the Word of God are people whom the Spirit of God now gives an extra enabling that they can, they can take what is complex and explain it to you that you can get it. That's the quality of a teacher that can look and see potential within you and draw it out so that you who did not think that you can now are able to do it. Who is able to take the world and bring it to you in a manner that you can understand. Who can introduce as education is, educare, to bring the world to you and you to the world. That there's an interface of learning that you're able to grasp concepts and depth and understanding that you're able to see things clearer and differently. Somebody that is able to take what can't be easily understood and put it in a form 
format to use good pedagogical skills and teach you in a manner that you are able to grasp. The teachers, we need teachers of the word of God. Yes. We are having a trend in the church of Jesus Christ where people just want to give you happy meals. Happy meals in the church. We don't need fast food in God in this age. We need deep, strong teaching. We need teaching. We need Christians that know what the doctrines are. That's why in this church, one of our discipleship courses are the doctrines of the faith. The fundamental doctrines. What is salvation? What is the doctrine of man? What is the doctrine of God? What is the doctrine of Jesus Christ? What is the doctrine of the last things? What is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit? What is the doctrine of sin? And what is the doctrine of salvation? And the doctrine of angels? What are these doctrines? What, in other words, what are the teachings that the Word of God gives to us so we can understand that? And it's, if, if any time we need spirit-filled teachers, it is now that we need we are facing a world, and I'm going to talk a little more about this tonight. We are facing a world that is introducing our children to some of the most abominable and debaucherous behaviors that you ever, you could never have imagined. Our children are being bombarded with morals that are totally against yours, from the cartoons they watch to the other stuff you tell them to watch. Daily, they're confronted, and we need teachers that are able, whether they're your children in your house, to those who are in our care in the Christian setting, to be able to make what the Christian position is clear. Last Friday, how many of you saw uh, many of the men of God stand up to say what their resistance is to same-sex marriage in Barbados? Yeah. But as I read it, I, I, I can't blame any of them because I know how the media operates. They just take the pieces that sound juicy and sweet and make the newspaper sell. But we need, when on then of God stand up and speak and elucidate a situation and take a stand that they do it with excellence, that they have good argument, that they quote the word of God with accuracy, that they are clear and that when people hear their reasoning, that they can stand up To defend the faith with excellence, we need teachers. In this church of Antioch, you had prophets yeah. and you had teachers. Yeah. And we give the names here, interesting names, chiefs and starting first, Barnabas. And I believe Brother Luke put that Barnabas first because he was the senior among them. And Levite, he would have known the word of God extremely well. And he's the one that played a critical role in establishing the school at Antioch. And then here's another one, Simeon, who was called Niger. And that word Niger there means black or black man. Here is a black man, not because not the means that were all the rest of them were white, but because he there was a distinction about him and he was called that. So don't let anybody fool you that it was all blonde hair and blue eyes. Hallelujah. Uh, the word of God is filled with people from all over the region of every color. So anytime you feel that you want to find your black self, just go check Simeon out. And Lucius of Cyrene. Hmm? It is believed, by the way, that that Simeon there was the one that helped Jesus carry the cross. Hmm? Manani, who had been brought up with Herod the tea trash. That's interesting. They, they were not just people from the, the streets, but here among them is a nobleman, a man that was well educated, with one with a, 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 a noble rearing. He was brought up with Herod, who was sitting on the throne. And there he was, he was among them. And then they had uh, Saul, which we know more now as Paul. And notice they were ministering to the Lord and fasting. Ministering there means that they were serving. Uh, and that word uh, often referred to officers of the court, refers to civil servants. People who give the government good and excellent service. 
It refers to, to the priests and how they ministered at the altar. It referred to the rulers of the synagogue and how they kept the people of God together and made sure that the scrolls were in the right place and that they had readers and that they had someone to speak the word of God. We get from, from that word, we get the word liturgical, referring to all the administration of the work of God. Now, how many of you know administration is of God? They, they were giving their service to the Lord. It's just like we say, I'm going to church and serve the Lord. When we volunteer our effort, when the hospitality makes the church look good, when we come together and we put efforts together so that the God's work and God's business gets done. When we put time and talent and treasure together so that we are advancing, so we can open a daycare, so we can expand a ministry, so that we can put things in place, so we can reach the lost, so we can reach into London born towers and educate some children, so that we can help a man that walks through the, the door that needs a job and a woman that is strained or hurt or abused to get back on her feet. When we do these things because we are so constituted, we are serving the Lord. Right. How many of you know the word of God says, as much as you do to the least of one of these, you do it unto? Yeah. We don't serve the Lord just because we sing. We don't serve the Lord just because we do religious acts in the church. But what we do to make people's lives better, to bring them to soundness and salvation and healing and power and victory is serving the Lord so that when we do sing in the choir we are singing because we want that song to lift a heavy burden to lift a spirit that is broken when we sing when we sing we want that song to minister to the heart and cause a person to know that God is great and he can do just like the Quran sing this morning that you will know that he'll do it again and again and every time because he has the power to do it when we stand and we usher, when we play, when we do here, we are constituting ourselves in such a manner that we are making God's will be done. Are you with me today? Yes, amen. They were ministering to the Lord. Then it says they were fasting and praying. Yes. Notice this wonderful church. It's growing. Gifted people are springing up in its ranks. The gifts of God are being exercised. Notice a significant part of the characteristic of this church is that they fast and pray. Fast and pray. May I suggest that when they look around Antioch and they sort of accomplish more the over half a million people that occupy that city lost in idolatry lost in ignorance don't know God living lifestyles that alienate them from God Involved in all kinds of sexual and moral behavior that is destroying them. When they look around their city and they see the various temples built to gods like Apollo. When they look around and they see all the lavish things that just shows the pride of the power of Rome and the people are just pawns and plebeians. When they see that they don't know Jesus and their lives are defeated and they're under the boot of the enemy. I believe that the church was not just praying fasting out of ritual, but I believe that they were praying for the rest of that deal. Are you there? They were in the heart of the city and I believe they had the city at heart. I believe they fasted and prayed was that change. I believe they were praying that more people would come to Jesus Christ. I believe they were praying that they would have some breakthroughs and that they would change the culture that needed to change so that people can be 
be saved. Yeah. yeah. I believe they were praying for the sin. Yeah, amen. Let me ask you this morning. Are you praying for the sin? It's one thing for us to stand up and say, I'm not knocking them at all. I'm right there with them. We are not going to participate in anything that's against the Bible. If it's against the Bible, we do it. May I say to you, it's very possible that Barbados will change its laws. Yes, yeah, very possible. I really permit that you cannot discriminate against a person's sexual orientation. And if they want to get married, they can. It's very possible that Barbados can recognize any marriage that is done outside of Barbados in Barbados. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That's why we can't take up silly positions. It's very possible that Barbados can say, okay, we're not performing any marriages there, but if any same-sex couple marries and they have their certificate to prove it, we will recognize it. You think we're going to, there are certain elements that are not going to lose one American dollar or one British pound or one euro behind that. Because they want the brand of Barbados to be a pair inviting for everybody. That's right. That's right. And they don't consider you the church to be an important part of the tourism sector. As a matter of fact, you might be running them away. You want to come. That's all that has to happen. And all our arguments will go through the door. We ain't approving it here, but we will accept any from outside. That's not the position for us to be. Look at the position of these who were gifted and were competent and filled with the Spirit of God. They were praying and fasting. Let me tell you the chief more praying and fasting than protesting. Our strength is not in laws. Our strength is not in policies. Our strength is not in positions. Our strength is in the Lord. Yeah. The Bible says it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. We're praying and fasting. Yeah. I believe if we, uh, and I, I know I'm right now, because when I look at the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, uh, when you look at Colossians and you look at Thessalonians uh, and you look at Romans, they list with the prayers of Paul and he's praying for the cities. He's praying for people. He's begging the church to pray. He says to the Ephesian church, pray for me that a door may be open, that I may be able to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ. You pray. The success here is good. It's wonderful. And I believe you pray for Antioch. That it would be saved. Yeah. Or for a church that is filled with people that know what God's will is. Or for a church that can teach what God's will is. And for a church that doesn't just stop there, but prays and fasts that the city may be saved. That's when you're in the heart of the city and you have the city. Yeah, Brother Victor, let me tell you something happened. As they were praying and fasting, we got to come to a place, Christians, that are not afraid to fast. As soon as they say we can fast, oh Lord, have mercy. Again. But you will join a club, you will join that 30 day challenge. And they tell you, well, for the first two days, you're going to get your detox, you can't eat no food, you're on all liquids, and you're going to lose X amount of weight, and your pecs are going to look real good, and your biceps are going to be popping, and your, your guns are going to look strong, and your triceps are going to stick out, and you're going to have a washboard. And you say, all right. <laughs> Let 
Or we be in good Barbados that got summer all day long and watch TV and say, you're going to have a summer body. Get a summer body. Get a summer body. And there you are, doing Jenny Craig and can't even get the product. And she's telling you what to eat, what not to eat, and you're fasting, and that's all right. Huh? But we said, let's fast. And pray. And the person is going to go, hold on. Till six. Let's get dark eyes here. Get dark eyes, hallelujah. <laughs> You gotta sacrifice some things for the Lord. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Hmm? Yeah. The same believers will be given a promotion. And the job is so intense. I'm speaking from experience. Lunch went by and you are eager. Four o'clock come and you were supposed to clock out. Ain't he yet? waiting for the truck to come and deliver the goods and you are ready to receive them. The boss comes and says, Andy, come in. No, no sir, I need God, but you listen, you know, the counting on you, you just hold on. That shipment is very important. And I'm glad we can count on you. I'll see you in the morning. You gone home. Yeah. You there. Yeah, true. The rain is at the top of the street waiting. Can't leave. Hungry. And the doctor already warned you that if you don't eat, you're going to get an ulcer because all the cramps in your stomach is because you're not eating properly. But guess what? I got to do my job. Do my job. Do my job. Do my job. You're fasting. Fasting. They're fasting and praying. And as they're fasting and praying, look what the Bible says. And pray, I'm going to leave you with three thoughts. One, the Spirit of God made a call. A call. Yeah. See, there are only some activities that we engage in when the Word of God can become clearly heard. We have to be in the place, the attitude. We have to be receptive. Yeah. We have to want it. Some of us want God to come and put it in our pocket. Download it on the computer. Send a message to you. Hit your BB and you got it. You need to understand if we're going to grow as a church and be effective, we're going to have to find out what the boss wants. We're going to have to find out what the captain of our salvation wants. What's the strategy, Jesus? Where do you want us to go next? Which problem in the city do you want us to tackle? How do you want us to tackle it? Who do you want us to reach? Where would you have us to go? Oh God, we don't even have the resources, but if you would give it to us, we'll do it, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The call comes. The Bible says the Holy Spirit says, separate to me, Barnabas. The top man and the new man. I want the two of them. The others were already in worshiping. You would see that those were the ones that started the ministry down there. Lucius and others. But Saul was the one that was brought him to help him. Bring, bring Barnabas. And I need Saul. Saul already was personally called. That's right. You've already got your personal call. Stop waiting for another call. You've got your call already. All God wants you now to show you where to use that calling in his ministry. Ain't gonna be no other call. God gonna call it the one thing he wants. You think he's gonna change it? Or you don't like it? Mm -mm, ain't gonna happen. A call is a call. Bottom of Seven people identified here as leading bottom of the to the word I call them to. It's a call. Secondly, the church 
confirms the call. Not because they dealt the Holy Spirit, but they fasted and prayed again. What are they fasting and praying for? God says, separate them for the work for which I call them. Well, they need direction. They need direction. Yeah. Where do we go, Lord? How do we go, God? And the church prays and fasts again. Isn't that wonderful? We need to be able to see the young people that are sitting on these front pews. We need to be able to look at our deacons and our deaconess. We need to be able to identify the leaders of our ministry. Those who serve in their various capacities. And make sure that we pray for them. That God would guide them in the ministry. That the church may go in the direction that it needs to go. I'm thankful for every one of you. Because sometimes the tank is low. Sometimes your strength is depleted. Sometimes your, your thoughts are discombobulated. Sometimes you're discouraged. Sometimes you're not sure. Sometimes you wish that you had accomplished that point the way and you're feeling your way through. And it's good to know that there's a church, there's people, there's saints of God that are in the sea in fire, that are saying, Help him, God. Lord, lead him, Lord. Help him to make the right choice, Lord God. I'm glad for the mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers that prayer for me. There's some that say, I'm praying for you. And you need to know that it encourages you. Because you know there's some black power right there. And you can go forward in the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah, very true. Very true. Church confirmed. Then the church conferred its blessing and set them forth. The Bible says that when they had laid hands on them, they set them forth. They set them forth. Every clearly says. What the church did according to Acts 14 and 20, I believe 24, 25. It says when they had gone forth and came back, they came back to the place where they were recommended or commended to the grace of God. Did you hear that? The church, listen, commended them to the grace of God. They were going into hostile territory. They were going to preach a gospel to a world that didn't want to hear it. If you think homosexuality is a problem, it was worse than. In a typical household, a man had the right to his wife, to his servant girls, to the young boys that were progressive, that were in his service. If he wanted to frolic with them, he could too. Plus, if he was so disposed, he could go down to the brothel down the street and then he could come out home. The word catamites, you go Google it, was a standard word. Boys that were pubescent served at tables and they didn't only serve food, when those who drank and got sweet, got stupid. Indulged with those boys, and they wanted them before their pubics begin to show. Let him that hear of understand. They didn't want men, they wanted nice, innocent boys. That was standard in Paul's day. We ain't even have that. That's why we can't freak out. Got a scripture that's loaded with ammunition. We got a scripture that's loaded with ammunition. We have a church that has power that can lay hands. We got to be able to lay hands on pastors, lay hands on evangelists, lay hands on missionaries, lay hands on the ministers, lay hands on the deacons, lay hands on the youth workers, lay hands on the ministry workers, lay hands on teachers who are running IFCS. Clubs in school, lay hands and send them forth with the power of God to bring about change. Yes. Yes. 
They laid hands on them and they were Let me ask you today. You're in the heart of the city. Do you have a city right now? Are we a church that is allowing for the prophetic word of God to come forth? Are we a church that is allowing the teaching of the word of God to equip the saints that our young people can deal with the issues they face? Are we a church that is worshiping God Are we a church that is crying for what we see around us? Are we a church that say, God give us bridge down. God give us on the street. God give us green fields. God give us green park land. God give us Nelson Street. God stop human trafficking. God help us to reach Tweedside Road. God help us to reach Martindale's Road. God give us the bail land. God give us Pinelands. God give us Barbados. God help us to go down to the Caribbean. God give us Haiti. God give us the world. Yeah. When we get there, the Holy Spirit is going to move. Yeah, amen. Go move. Bow your heads in the sense. God loves the city. God loves the city. God loves the city. God loves every baby that has been born. God sees the teenager that is struggling with the child that she got before she was ready. God sees the single mother that doesn't have the support that she needs. God sees the girl that was introduced to sexuality too soon. And without her consent. God sees the fathers that are trying to raise their children in hostile relationships or with poor resources. God sees the man that is trying to be a good father and lacks the skills on the way with all. God sees the child that is trying to do right, but his parents are doing wrong. God sees the schoolyard that is being bombarded every day by the hawks, the vultures, and the snakes at the side of the road. God sees the teachers that are trying to instill values in the hard heads. God sees the youth that are under pressure from the tears. And God wants righteousness, holiness. But God also sees that there's a church. There's a congregation that have the prophetic gift, the gift of teaching. He wants to separate serve us from serving. As God speaks to you this morning, step up. It's time to stop thinking about a bigger couch. How to change the windows. How to make your house look better. How to upgrade your car. How to upgrade your phone. It's time to stop thinking about the trivial things in life. And start thinking about the souls of men and women that are going to hell. It's time to ask, what can I do, Lord? Here am I. Sing. As we sing this song this morning, I'm calling you to discipleship. I'm calling you to follow Jesus deeper. I'm calling you to give yourself more. I'm calling you to step up. I'm calling you to prayer. I'm calling you to fast. I'm calling you to seek God. I'm calling you to support the church. I'm calling you to ask God to give you love in your heart. 
ethnicity. Have you been able to send forth ministers to sit here? Do what he says as we sit here.